this is our second lecture in the chapter six on structural analysis, and we finished out trusses, and today it's uh, frames and machines. So frames and machines, basically they're multi-force members. A truss really was only a two-force member. Each It was made up of a bunch of two-force members, but now what we're going to have is typically pin-connected multi-force members. Uh, if it's a frame, that's a way of describing it that's stationary and typically is used to support a load or, or move a load. If it's a machine, it's movable and it's to transmit a load. So the key idea is that you generate not just one free body diagram, but multiple free body diagrams of each member. So one free body diagram for each member of this frame or this machine. Uh, we have to sort of get inside of it sometimes to get those internal forces between pin connected members. And so you have multiple members giving us multiple free body diagrams and then the key is to focus on those forces between the members. Here's a problem, very simple introductory problem. Determine the force required to hold the 300 kilogram mass in equilibrium. So here's our mass. Uh, what, what would you, how would you describe these three things on, you know, three on the right side, three on the left side? What would, what does those look like? Rollers. rollers. And those rollers would stop it from moving to the X back or forward. But would it stop it from moving up or down? No, no. And now right up here, what do we have? We have a pulley connected, a pulley connected, and pulley connected. And then up here is some support, and you have a pulley at C, a pulley at B, and a pulley at A. So determine the force, P, required to hold the 300 kilogram mass in equilibrium. So it looks like there's this cable, 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 true. So the first clicker question, do all the cables have the same uh, tension, tension force in them? A for yes and B for no. Well, let's take a look at our responses. So some of us say, uh, yeah, they all have the same tension. And some of us say, no, they, they don't all have the same tension. Uh, who said no? That's the correct answer. Who would like to volunteer and, in their own words, say why they made that observation, that not all the cables have the same tension? Go ahead. They're not all the same cable. And so when you start a problem like this, what you need to do is you need to look at each cable. And I like to take maybe a different colored pen or something, and I like to find a place where a cable starts. Um, is this a place where this cable right here starts? If it's connected, is it connected to a pin that's connected to the ceiling? So it's firmly connected at this location right here, true? All right, so we just start tracing this cable out. Comes down. Does it go around the pulley? Is it continuous around that pulley? And then it continues on. What I'd like to do is I'd like to ask another clicker question. There are more, there's more than one cable in this problem. How many uh, unique cables are there? In unique cables, how many are there? And so uh, answer A, there's one. Answer B, there's two. Answer C, there's three. Answer D, there's four. Answer E, there's five. How many unique cables are there in this problem? We started tracing the cable, one of the cables. There you go. There's three unique cables in this problem. Very good. So I started tracing them out. And let me finish out the trace uh, on this red cable. It comes around, continuous, and then right here it stops, doesn't it? Now, there's another cable 
it starts on the other side of this block. That block could, you know, it doesn't have the same tension through that block. It's connected to the pin that's connected to the middle of the pulley at B. True. And so, but here, a unique cable goes around this one, comes up, and is connected to the rod that's connected to the pin of pulley A. And then the last one, maybe we'll color code it like this, goes like that. All right? All right. So what I want to do is I want to create a free body diagram that will include this 300 kilogram mass in it. I want a free body diagram that can, will include that 300 kilogram mass, which will help me uh, determine, I'm not going to solve it in one fell swoop, but give me a free body diagram that has that 300 kilogram mass in it and as many cables and unique names of those cables. Maybe we call this cable uh, one, that purple, uh, two, the blue, and three in the red. So you could talk about the tension in one, tension in two, tension in three, okay? So can you give me a, a free body diagram? I'm gonna pause, walk around, see what you got. Call me over when you get it. You know, it's real easy to watch somebody else get a free body diagram, and but sometimes when confronted with a new problem, it's a little challenging. So you really, um, please know that you have to do it. Okay, so what we do is I need to come in here and I need to cut this object that's the focus of my study free from the surroundings. Now, I could cut through the metal, but that's probably going to force me to then say, what is the force in this metal link that goes up to connect to that pulley, that pulley, that pulley. That's a fine. Some of you then quickly, uh, I could see, did a, an additional free body diagram just around here. And if you did it around that pulley that's not given a name, you found that you had to cut with two tensions forces coming up and that um, that metal bar coming down, so you could call this, um, they didn't give it a name, what well, you got A, B, C, call this D, E, F, right? D, E, and F. And so this would be maybe the, the force in F coming down the link. And then this would be the force in F going up, which from this free body diagram you conclude is two T3s. So some people even skip that step. Or some person I saw come up here and said, I'm going to include the three pulleys, and I'm going to cut, 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 right? Uh, here it comes to a dilemma, though. So you could cut through the metal, and there you go. You would then have the force and the link going up to D and the force and the link D, that was E, and then uh, D. And then you conclude that that's 2 t twos and this is two t1s right okay that's fine somebody wanted to do a free body diagram that's a little larger and so they would have this object they would even put in the three massless pulleys right i forgot to put the weight in here w so this is the weight which is m times g and then here it's more clear i'll have two t3s that I have to cut, two T2s that I cut, and two T1s, and then you look at this, and the big question is, I know I'm getting a cluttered diagram, so let me erase it a little bit and clarify. Is uh, P, do I have another, you know, when I cut through this cable right here maybe, do I have uh, a tension force down with P? Do I have a P anywhere? No. You just can cut right through this cable and come down in the air without going and doing anything with that over there. All right? So you just have one, two, three, four, five, six tensions up. Two of them have the same value. Two of them have the same value. Two of them have the same value. All right. So... Um, let me ask this. Uh, 
we talked about the tension in cable one. This was cable one. Tension in cable two and the tension in cable three. All right. I want you to um, determine what is the relationship between the tension in cable one and the tension in cable two. Is the tension in cable one equal to one third, one half, one, two, or three times the tension in cable two? Answer A, B, C, D, E. Do you understand that multiple choice question? We have different tensions in cables. We have a t cable one and a cable two. What it, how is the tension in cable one related to the tension in cable two? Everybody in, I hope. So, uh, hmm. who uh, would like to describe what they did? You've introduced another free body diagram for the pulley at A. At A. You did a free body diagram, pulley at A. Because everybody wasn't correct on this, can you draw a free body diagram that encompasses only pulley A? Can you do that? Some of you are correct. A lot of you are correct. Now that we have a free body diagram for pulley at A, I ask the same question. So only 30 seconds. What is T1 equal to T2? It's one-third times T2, one-half times T2, one times T2, two times T2, or three times T2? Answer A through E. All right. So the pulley is, you cut it like this around, and so you'll get the pulley at A, and you'll have acting upwards the T2 right here. You had the cut right there. And then you'll have down, 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 down. You'll have basically three T1s. And some of the forces in the Y balance. So T2 up must balance three T1s down. So T1 is equal to one third T2. Correct? Correct? Let's go ahead and see how we did. So we did pretty good. How about before we did the free body diagram? Well, there was some, most of you already had it, but I'd like to get 100% correct, okay? All right, so with this free body diagram, the same thing, what you find is that the weight is equal to 2T1s plus 2T2s plus 2T3s, and we just found that every T2 is equal to 3T1s, so that's 3T1s right there that you can replace. And can you do me a favor and finish out this problem? And tell me what the, the, the uh, P is, because isn't uh, T1 equal to P? Isn't T1 equal to P? What you're pulling down P with that rope. So uh, finish this out and give me an alphanumeric for the weight in units of, let's do it uh, easily, kilogram force not in newtons. Just give it to me in kilogram force. So I should have erased this to make some little more room. And what do we find? We found that the, this equation translated the weight is equal to 2 times P plus, then you have 2 times 3 times P. True? plus, so then you had two times, but then it's a little challenging. What was, how is T3, the tension over here, related to the tension two? You do a free body diagram of B, you find three T2s down equal to T3 up. And so, um, um, T3 is equal to two T2s, 
and each T2 we just found was 3 T1s, so it's 2 times 3 T1s is equal to T3. So we have 2 times 2 times 3 T1, which is P. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Three. That's right. And so what did we come up with? You come up with how many? Okay. So P is uh, 11.54 uh, kilograms force. Let's see what we got. 11.5. All right, 11.54, 11.53. Oh, you're challenging me there. All right, good enough. All right. Let's take a look at this problem. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction at pins A and C. So how many, where's, what it, there's pin A. And there is pin C. Pin A is uh, to the surroundings using what? what? What type of support is this? Well, it's a pin support at A. And this is a pin support, not a roller, at C. You, know, um, you might want to think about it later after we solve this problem. What would happen if you turned C into a roller? Would it work? Probably not. Okay. They have another pinned connection at B. Do you see that? So they have A, B, and C, but they only want the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction at the pins A and C. What are the things that they're, you're asked to find? Well, it's pretty obvious, but you're asked to find AX, AY, CX, and CY. Four things. That's our standard no, no, notation used in the textbook for the reaction force at pin A and the X and Y. Now, we didn't introduce them uh, to show the direction on our free body diagram, but let's go ahead and do that. You can draw a free body diagram of the whole system, which has how many members does this system have? It has two members. You would call one member the member A to B and the other member from B to C. Are any of these members two force members or are they multi force, meaning three or more forces on them? Is A to B a two force member? All right, we'll ask that question with a clicker. Is A to B member two force? A, yes, or B, no? So, it's not a two-force member, it's a three-force member. If you isolate it, it'll have some reaction at A. You could uh, draw, let's go ahead and draw a free body diagram of that member. It has a load right here of 150 pounds, and really that's one of the reasons it has, it's a three-force member. It has some reaction at B. You can draw the reaction at B or connection force B with like a BX. And, and, and a BY. Likewise at A, you could draw it as AX and AY. You could switch them. You know, some people may say, no, I think, you know, BX is in the other direction. So I'm going to sketch that on my diagram. So everybody's free body diagram now is part of their answer. When I grade it, I have to look at both of those to see if the sign consistent with the free body diagram. All right, now that's why it's a three-force member. Let's go ahead and draw the free body diagram for this member B to C, like that. And uh, there's B to C. Now, if you want to do it a little more accurately, what I can do is I can try and sketch it like this, like that. Then I'll put my load on. And then what I can do is if I'm really good at this, I can copy and move that over, and it's really drawn close to scale. And 
what we have is we have this connection, that connection. Now, this down here is pin C, so we could draw that as CX and CY. But would it be correct if I drew this as BX and this as BY? That, that would be incorrect, wouldn't it? Because when I have multiple members and I'm drawing free body diagrams of each member and I have the same BX in two free body diagrams, they need to be consistent. And this comes back to if I'm pushing on you, you're pushing back on me. Action, reaction, right? So if you assume the positive direction for BX is in that direction, on this free body diagram from member A to B, it must be consistent. This is the positive BX. And now you're going to talk about 20 pound force or 30 pound force, whatever you calculate for that BX, it's in the right direction, consistent for both free body diagrams. Likewise, if you calculate it to be negative 23 you know, pounds, it would be consistent because a negative sign would switch it. It would be consistent for both free body diagrams. Likewise, right here, this is my BY. Very important that we get those to be consistent. Now that we have two free body diagrams, we have our load of 100 pounds. We have our support at CX and CY, our BX, BY, AX, AY. How would we go about solving for those four unknowns? Let me pause, walk around the room, and see how far you can get. And if you can solve for them, box them and show them to me, OK? All right, so let me jump in and move us forward a little bit. So if we look at the first member, A to B, and we do the sum of the moments around B, we then can solve for AY, true? And a lot of us solve for AY, and we found that it was 60 pound force. How do we do it? Member A to B doing the sum of the moments around point B. Sum of the moments around point B must equal to zero. Well, at this point, you really need to, you can't really do much more with uh, member AB. You'll have to come back to it. But if you look at member BC, so if you do the sum of the forces in the Y, equal to zero, you get an equation for what CY has to be. CY is equal to BY, because that's down. I put it on the other side of the equal sign, plus 100 pound force, and I pick off the sign of the 45 degrees. Sorry about that, 45 degrees. But uh, I look at this, I just don't know what BY is, do I? You can figure it out. How did you figure out what BY was? You, you could go back to member AB, this, this member AB, and you already solved for this is 60 pounds up. This was 150 down. That has to be 90 pounds up, right? Some of the forces in the Y. You're going to be going back and forth for a problem like this between members and looking at your equations. So that allows us to bring down this 90. And so now we can solve for CY. And what does CY come in at? 161 pound. So CY is 161 pound. All right. At this point, you've used uh, some of the moments around B for this member A to B, the sum of the forces in the Y equal to zero for member A to B, and you used the sum of the forces in the Y equal to zero for member B, C. What can I do now? Well, it, let me give a hint. If this line is projected down, and this line is projected down, and this is projected over, they go through a common point, let's call that O, for the arc, for that, that radius two-foot arc for member BC. And you could do the sum of the moments about point O. The sum of the moments about point O must equal zero for equilibrium on member BC. 
and that'll move you forward, okay? Let me pause and uh, let you continue on. Well, um, did people conclude that BX is negative 161 uh, pound? All right. And then you jump over here and you say, oh, that's uh, negative 161. So guess what AX is? 161. So AX is 161 pound force. True? All right. Then the last one, CX. All right. How do I find CX? How many people found it? How would, okay, what, and you got? Uh, I got CX is equal to, what is the X exactly? On this diagram, right. It's, it's, what you could do is uh, uh, some of the forces now in the X equal zero for this member BC, and then you have that component of 100 times the cosine of 45 in the negative X, plus you have this negative of a negative, which is a positive. Anyway, this is a negative. This turns out to be, for my diagram, negative 90 pounds. All right? That makes sense? All right, that took a little more time than I thought. Let me press forward. Here's another one. What do I have is I have a 300 kilogram drum that has a center of mass at G. So right here it is, and because it has that much mass, it has that much weight, which is MG. Okay. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of the force acting at pin A. Here's pin A right here and the reactions on the smooth pads, that keyword smooth pads at C and D. So here's a pad at C and a pad at D, meaning if it's smooth, it, it only has a normal force between the pad and the drum, okay? Not, not any tangential force. The grip at B on the member A, B, D, let's find, or D, A, B, let's find D, A, B. Here's D, goes up to A, then over to B. So this member is D, A, B. It's, it's a lighter tannish color than this darker colored member, right? Can you see that that darker colored member comes around on the back side? So the lighter colored member DAB. Okay, the grip at B on that DAB resists both horizontal and vertical components of force at the rim of the drum. So actually, that's like a little hook. It, it can push and lift. It, it can exert a force on the drum in both the horizontal as well as vertical. That's what they're telling you. All right, the pad only exerts a force in the X direction on the drum. Only there. And the same with the pad at D. All right. So you read the question about four or five times, and you say, what are we asked to solve for? We're asked to solve for the horizontal and vertical components of the force acting at pin A. That would be our standard AX, AY. And the reactions on the smooth pads C and D. You could put normal at C, normal at D. The book likes that terminology. I would put maybe also CX and DX. That's fine. I understand that terminology. Or you could even put C and D. And the free body diagram shows the only direction that you're going to show, and that's only in the horizontal. That would be fine as well. So uh, let's see which one I use, so maybe I'm consistent with my notes. I use CX and DX. That's the ones I used. So it really doesn't matter. You just have to be clear on your illustration. And the more consistent you are with the textbook, as well as me, the better. All right. I have how many members for that I could draw individual free body diagrams of to start to be able to solve for these unknowns. How many things can I draw a free body diagram of? 
So I could draw a free body diagram of either nothing, one thing, two things, three things, four things, you know, answer A, B, C, D, E. How, what is the maximum number of members that I could have in this multi-member frame or the chain is not an individual don't don't count chain that's just the load p applied up here all right so basically there are there's three members right there's three members uh, that you could draw free body diagrams of. What I did was I took the liberty of doing a little work before, and here they are. So this is the, the, the original illustration. And what is this a free body diagram of? Only the 55-gallon drum, only the drum. I, did it say it was 55-gallon? Usually they're 55-gallon. Okay. And this is of what? This darker colored link, it's pretty hard for me to try and draw it. I just try to cut and paste. And then this one right here is that other member. So there's really three, all right? So if there's three, and then I almost cheated a little bit. I put the red arrows in. Uh, that's a hard part of drawing the free body diagram. It is really a hard part of doing that. So what I did was I said there is a normal reaction at D from that pad. This is D sub X. I think about it, and I'm saying probably that mechanism is going to push that can to the right. So I assume that's the positive direction for DX. What member's exerting that force? This member over here. All right. I didn't give it a name. Maybe you call it the second member or the second part. And so DX has to be on both free body diagrams in opposite directions to be consistent. Otherwise, they're not going to be consistent. All right. Likewise, this is CX, and CX is on this one, the first member, isn't it? So are, are these consistent? Yes. And are these consistent? Yes. All right. Okay, let's come up here. The next easiest one is probably P. That's our chain-induced load, vertical load, acting at point E on that top link, remember. All right. Then it was just a, a, a guessing game. What is AX and what's happening in AY? Well, I thought about it for a minute. If, uh, if CX is pushing back positive this direction on this top piece, probably AX is in the positive X direction. That's why I picked it. And I thought, well, if P is picking it up, probably AY is pulling it down. So I try to minimize the number of minus signs that I have for answers. But you don't have to. You, 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 as long as you're consistent with your free body diagram. So this is P, this is AX, this is AY. Now to be consistent, I come down here. Isn't this positive AY in the opposite direction up? This is AX and a negative, and they are consistent. All right, what's happening here at B? This is B. Well, you think about it a little bit. From the point of the can, BY is lifting it the point of the can lifting, hence BY on the second member is down. And probably because both CX and CY, or sorry, CX and DX are in the positive X direction, probably BX is in a negative on the can, pulling it back, and BX is positive to be consistent there. The last one I probably should have started with, there's the weight, there's the weight. All right, so you bust it into members, get their free body diagrams, make sure and label all the internal uh, forces at this pin connection. And we were asked to solve for the, let me see if I can highlight which we're asked to solve for. We're asked to solve for AX and AY. And we're asked to solve for CX and DX. How would we 
How would we do that? We also are given the weight W right here. We can convert it to newtons, but let's just call it 300 kilogram force is the weight. Okay. Right away, can you tell what P is? What does P have to be? Do a free body diagram of the entire system. P has to be 300 kilogram force up. All right, 300 kilogram force. All right. Um, okay, if I'm looking for AX or AY, um, if I focus on this first member's free body diagram, one of those I can now determine which one can I solve for? AY. You're exactly right. So AY is 300 kilogram force. You got that from the sum of the forces in the Y on that first member. All right. Can you get AX? If you do some of the forces in the Y, what do you recognize about CX and AX? They're equal in magnitude. Yeah. So if I look at this member, this top member, it has two couples. You see that? One's trying to rotate this way. One's trying to rotate that way. So you do the sum of the moments. It really doesn't matter where on it. <laughs> and you can get a solution for... AX, in the interest of time, AX comes in at 1,300 uh, kilogram force. Okay. You see how we did that? Once you bust, the hard job is getting the free body diagrams, isn't it? Usually then it's just, okay, where is my sum of the forces, sum of the moments? All right. Okay, CX is is AX, which is um, 1,300 kilogram force. So the only thing we have to solve for is DX. Anybody want to make a suggestion how to solve for DX? Some of the moments on the drum around point B. And if you do that, you'll get that uh, DX comes in at 106.57. Let's call it 107 kilogram force. What was the hard part? Getting the member free body diagrams and everything consistent. All right, ready to press forward? All right, so we have this man. He weighs 175 pounds, and he stands on a platform that weighs 30 pounds. So this is the platform. It has a weight of the platform is 30 pounds. The individual has a weight of the man of 175 pounds. Determine the total force the man it must exert on the bar A to B. So here is A, here is B, there is a bar, A to B, and the normal reaction he exerts on the platform at C. So right between the bottom of his foot and the platform, maybe you have a scale there. It would measure the weight or the force between the bottom of the feet and the floor. So that's what you're asked to find. So in notation, we want to know the force that the man exerts on the bar. Let's call it AB. Force on the bar AB. Look like a good notation. And then we want the force at C that the man exerts on to the platform at C. All right. Now that we know what we're asked to solve for, um, how, we, how would we do it? Let me ask this question. From the perspective of the bar, does the man push the bar up? Answer A. Or does the man pull the bar down? Answer B. Okay, a lot of you are correct. The vast, vast majority are correct. Why, how can you determine that he's pulling the bar down? Okay, 
what is what is this right here that loops across that pulley and comes down and connects to the what is that called but the pulley but it goes around the pulley and goes down it connects at b and connects down here at the platform it's a cable it's a rope something right can a rope be in anything but in tension so if we do a free body diagram the force that the rope exerts on the bar could it be pushing it down? No. It has to be pulling it up. So that's a tension force on this end. And there's a tension force in this other cable right there in that end. So uh, basically on the ends, the bar is feeling two forces up because of the attached cable. And the hands have to be two hands bringing it down. Let's call it H and H. And the force... Read it again. The total force the exerts on the bar is going to be 2 times H. Each hand exerts a force, so it's 2 H's down. True? Okay. Now, there's a nice free body diagram of our bar A to B, of our member A to B. What would a free body diagram look like of the man? Can you sketch the free body diagram of the man? Notice I put in H and H, two H's because there's two hands. You can put in two feet, but let's just put them together as one foot, one something down there, okay? Just one force on the bottom, the feet are so close together. Need a free body diagram of the man? Should it include the weight of the man? Yes. You can do an outline of the man. Try to be anatomically correct, some way like that. Right? Then we can possibly grab that, move it over here, then get rid of the bar, the base, and we could then say, okay, I'm going to have uh, force up the hand. Hand, are those consistent? Right? We already put the weight of the man in, that was 175 pounds. And then we have a force up, and what did we want to call that? The force C? Do I have the directions right on it? Does it look good? Thumbs up if you agree. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Good, good. All right, there's one other free body diagram we can draw for this problem. It's of the platform. That one's pretty easy, but let's just draw it. Here's our platform. We have a, a tension up and a tension up, T and T. And what do we have here? I'm going to put the weight of the platform, which was 30 pounds in it. And we'll put coming down, I know it's a little confusing, F, C. So the platform feels a downward force from the shoes of the man standing on it. So is the direction of F of C consistent between the two free body diagrams? Good. Very good. All right. Now, uh, there's one other thing you could do a free body diagram of. You could do a free body diagram of each pulley. Could you not? You don't have to, but you could. Um, uh, what would that tell us? That the tension in this top cable related to these two T's going down. This is T and T. All right. All right. From the information given, if I did a free body diagram of the large system that came up cut through that cable, cut through that cable, cut through that cable, cut through that cable, and came down. Do you, could you tell me the tension in these cables? All four of these cables that I cut through, I mean, there's really only two unique cables, but they would have the same tension, right? What is the value of that T? Is it, isn't that the value of this T that's there and the value of this T right there? I can determine what T is using the free body diagram of this right here. What is it? Isn't 4 
T equal to the weight of the man plus the weight of the platform. So what is T in units of pounds? I'm going to ask for a numeric answer. And you got 30 seconds. This is a bad looking four, isn't it? Almost looked like an H. All right, everybody's in. And, all right, well, okay, good. This is right, this is right. Um, well, I think they calculated the tension in this cable and that one up here, didn't they? Um, okay, so this is um, uh, 50, 51.25 pounds. All right, from this free body diagram of the bar A to B, can you tell me what H is? Each hand exerts a force of 51.25 pounds. True? So the total force that the man exerts on the bar is 2H, which is 102.5 pounds. You want to round it off to 103? Perfect. 103 pounds. True? Did I leave you in the dust? Or are you still with me? Still with me. Perfect. Now we can come over here. We have the, the two H's pulling up, the weight of the man down. What is the force C? What is that normal reaction that he exerts on the platform? What is this right here? Can you calculate that? Give me a numeric. 30 seconds. Seventy two, seventy two point five, seventy three, we take all of those. So this is uh, seventy two point five pounds. We're done with this problem. So if, think about it. If the person's pulling on that bar, right, if you put a weight scale under them, they say, I weigh 175. In this contraption, you look at it and say, Oh, I only weigh seventy two point five pounds. All right. So we continue this problem. And what we do is we turn it around. You still have a, 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 a cable that goes like this, and then one that goes from here down. A cable that goes like this, then one goes down. But it's flipped. Can you see how it's flipped? It's changed a little bit. And so looking at this bar, does the man have to push up on the bar? Answer A or pull down on the bar, answer B. Got to ask harder questions, don't I? He's pushing up. All right. You put the weight bathroom weight scale right in between the feet right there. Is it going to is it going to be really high? Will it be higher than 175? Yeah. It sure will. And if you look closely at the illustration out of the textbook, is the person happy? No, no last one they were smiling and happy. There they're frowning. Why? Because it's pretty hard to do, to do what they're doing. Okay, so the same question here. What is that total force that the individual exerts on the bar A to B, and then what is that normal force between the bottom of the foot and the platform? And we already said, uh, we expect this to be greater than 175 pounds, where before it was only 72, 73 pounds. All right, how do we solve this problem? Probably do a free body diagram for large system. You have the weight of the man, you have the weight of the platform, you can get this tension and that tension. True. Then you would do a free body diagram of each pulley. So let's call this uh, T1. And so we have what would be the value of T1? You know, T1 is 175 plus, what was our platform? 30 divided by 2, isn't it? 102.5, is that right? Okay. Now, if I do a free body diagram 
of this pulley right here, I'll have two T1s pulling up, and I'll have a T2 pulling down. So guess what T2 is? 205 pounds. 205 pounds. That's the tension in this cable right here. It's a lot higher, isn't it? Okay. Well, um, let's go and analyze the bar. I'm speeding up a little bit because we've solved a very similar problem just before this. So what about this tension going down? That's a T1. That's a tension going down T1. We have two hands going up, two H's. So guess what the forces in the hands magnitude going up? The two H's is equal to two T1's, which is 205. That person better be able to lift at least 205 pounds to be able to do this. I don't know if I'm strong enough to do that. That's a lot of weight, isn't it? 205, my knees would buckle. <laughs> you have to, anyway, that's... Is that, did I do the math right? Do you agree? All right. And then we come down here and we have, okay, we have the free body diagram of the individual. If the individual is pushing up on the bar, there's a 205 pounds down bar onto the individual plus the weight, 175 pounds. And what do we have right here? We have the normal force, oops, I called it FC, going back up between the bottom of the, sh the platform and the bottom of the shoes. So what do you calculate that to be? It's a lot. My knees probably would buckle. All right? All right. Let's press forward. All right, let's take a look at this problem. We have uh, vice grips. Um, this is a configuration, it looks like vice grips. You have five pound force applied in the handle, right aligned over this pin D on the vice grips. Calculate the compressive force developed on the smooth bolt shank A in the jaws. So here is that smooth bolt shank A in the jaws. Now, it's not running perfectly horizontal, vertical, because it's tilted a little bit. It's tilted 20 degrees. Okay. But what we have is we have from the perspective, let me do this, let me draw. This is an outline of A, and it's going to have a compressive force and a compressive force on it. So if I wanted to do a free body diagram of a number of members, I would probably start with A, and I'd pull it over here, and I'd say that's my free body diagram. Maybe I want to introduce that angle of 20 degrees. Whoops, 20 degrees. And likewise, this is 20 degrees. Okay. What is the magnitude of that force? You just call it A. A. It's the same on both sides. The 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 little uh, bolt is feeling compression from the jaws. Okay. That's one free body diagram. I would probably want to get a free body diagram of this member right here. It goes this way, comes down, kind of goes around, comes up, and like that. I don't think I did a good job on that. Do you see that? And then what's right here? That's E, what's right there, that's B, and what's right there is the force A coming back. Uh, so this is the bottom. I'm drawing the free body diagram of the bottom jaw. Let's move it over here. Does that look okay? So this is my free body diagram of that bottom jaw. All right, I can do a free body diagram of 
this bottom arm. And maybe I put in this location and that location. And I just copy it and move it away. And maybe I, I could label those. Um, tell me a little bit about this member that goes from C to D. You want to make any observations about that? You look for entrusses, you look for zero force members. In components of machines like this, you look for two force members. You need to make that observation or greatly simplify the solution to this problem. Okay, but uh, if you wanted to, we could um, draw the free body diagram for that two force member and push it somewhere where it's not going to be in our way. We're it's probably not going to need it, but it's another member that we need to make an observation on. And then the last member would be this top handle and jaw. Goes something like this. Do this. I'm going to push it up a little bit and leave it right there. We can solve this problem and answer the questions without doing a, a complete analysis of all the forces and reactions in it. And when we reread the problem, it says calculate the compressive force developed on the smooth bolt shank A in the jaws. What are we asked to find? Just A, only one unknown. It's going to be so many pounds, that's it. 10 pounds, 5 pounds, 12 pounds, 11 pounds, 55 pounds, whatever it is. So how am I going to solve for A? Well, I come back and if I look at this lower jaw and I look at the lower handle and I look at this two force member C to D, those are the really only things I really have to analyze. Okay, let's do this. I make the observation that C to D is a two-force member. Isn't then this force either, that member is in either compression or tension? And because I don't like a lot of negative signs, I think a little bit about it. If I'm going to clamp down, what do you think member C to D is going to be? Tension or compression? Probably compression. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to draw force C to D on the free body diagram of that lower arm. I also draw the, the five pounds upward on that lower arm. And do I need to draw anything else at this point C? Do I put in CX and CY and in addition to F, C to D? Or is, or is F, C to D good enough? F, C to D is good enough. But I have to do something at pin E, right? Okay. Do you think EX is going to be in the that direction or the opposite direction? To the right. Yeah, it'll be to the right. You'd get ex more experience solving these. And then EY, probably upward. And it, that's okay if it's wrong. You just have a negative sign to deal with in your answer. But I come over here on that lower jaw to be consistent. Isn't this the correct direction for... E, X, and this the correct direction for E, Y? Yeah. And then I come up here and I'm going to have something happening there. I'm probably going to have uh, B, X, and maybe B, Y there. And I'm really looking for A. True? Okay. Now, I left a lot of the geometry here because it's hard to sketch all the, the lengths and angles correctly. But if I did a free body diagram like I did of this, this lower arm, can you solve for F, C to D? How would you solve in one equation, one unknown, get F, C to D solved for? How would you do it? Do the moments around point E. Right? So in the interest of time, if we do the moments around point E, you'll find that this is 39.7 pounds. Sum of the moments around point E equal to zero for that member. Gives us one equation, one unknown. Um, here's a little bit of an observation. 
this triangle right here has a run of 3 and a rise of 1.75. There's a 1 here and a 0.75 there. And from those two pieces of information, you'll be able to get the right angle or whatever you do to get that component because you're going to bust it into a component F, C, D, and the Y, and F, C, D, and the X. The F, C, D, and the X goes right through E. So all I need is that Y component. I'm sure you could make that calculation to, to solve for the 39.7 pound force for the force in C to D. Once I have that solved for, what can I do? I can do the sum of the forces in the X, and we can solve for this E to X. Get rid of this. When we solve for E to X, we find that E to X is 34.3 pounds. I think it's all within your skill set. Then we can do the sum of the forces in the Y, and it's 34.7 pound force. You would keep more digits in your calculator. All right. We bring that over. This is now 34.7. This is now 34.3. And I want to solve for A. Who wants to suggest how to just analyze now that lower jaw, lower jaw in order to solve for A? What are you going to do? Some of the moments about B. Now, here I have to be very careful because I put this point right here, A, in the middle of that rod. And so when you put it, it's really like at the middle of the rod at the right slope for A. Because the middle of the rod and B, that vertical distance is given. But they didn't really give it to the bottom of the rod to be. So just a little paying attention to the details. Do the sum of the moments around B, and you'll find that A is 36.1 pounds. It's quite an amplification. Five pound of pinch, multiply about a little over seven. That's 36 pounds of pinch on that rod, right? Compression on that rod. Look good? All right, well, uh, in, I didn't copy the words to the problem. So this problem asks us to calculate P. P on that cable, because the spring down here has a stiffness of 800 pounds per foot, Take a look. Is that a good value for the stiffness of the spring? So many pounds per foot? Yes or no? You always have to look for typos and other things. It's, it, it's good. And it has been uh, compressed. So I'll use the letter C for compression of the spring, not, not stretched. So I don't want to use a negative S. I'll, I'll use C for compression. And it's been compressed by 0 0.5 inch. So if the spring with that stiffness has been compressed by 0.5 inch and is still right here is perfectly uh, straight, this is going straight down right there. Okay, what is the load P? Can you solve for P? Well, strategy would be what is the force in the spring? It's a compression force in the spring, and it's K times the amount of compression. So we solve for whatever that force is in the spring. Let me take a look at my notes. It's 33.3333 uh, 33 pounds. Okay. Uh, there's only one little trick to it, and how many people know that there's 12 inches in one foot? So what we calculate is a force that's acting at E on this member. So what we can do is generate a lot of free body diagrams. Here is going to be a free body diagram of that member. 
and it's going to have A and B and E. All right. And the force at E is going to be in which direction on this member? In that direction or that direction? The first. It's, it's going to be pushing it in the negative X direction. So this is the force in the spring, which we just calculated to be 33.33 pounds. All right. We come up here and we have a pin connection at A. Um, do you think it's going to be holding it back, AX, or the other way? And then something's going to be happening at Y. Do you think it may be holding it down at Y? You look at the problem, whatever insight you have, you have to pick a direction. Hopefully you minimize the number of negative signs. And then what about BX? Maybe BX, and maybe, well, maybe this is BY. It's, it's what everything else in the world is doing on that member ABE. All right. We then have another member, which is B. This is B right here. This is D, and this is where P connects. All right. To be consistent, this would be BY, this would be BX, and then I have this pin at D and the pin at C. But I make an observation about this member C to D. What do I observe? Two force member. If you don't make that observation, you will probably spend four to five times more effort to solve this problem. So what happens is, is I can then just say, hmm, I think it's going to be in compression. And I'll just talk about the force in member C to D. And I'll look at it, and they give me even the angle of 30 degrees, so I'm not going to repeat that information. But I, I'm going to assume it's in compression, and away you go. So I have a free body diagram of this, this link right here and of this member right there. And I did a little work on the spring. Okay. Well, how am I going to solve for P? If you do the sum of the moments about point A, you'll have one equation equal with, one un, with two unknowns. BY and BX are unknowns in that equation. True? So it's nice to get one equation with one unknown. You can spend a lot of time on this problem, but there's one observation that you need to make and it's about this member BDE. Is BDE a two force member, yes or no? No, it is not a two force member. Is BDE a three force member, yes or no? Is it a three force member, BDE? Uh, B, BD, whatever this is, P. B, did I call it BDE? Sorry. This, this horizontal member, is it a three-force member or not? It is. If it's a three-force member, uh, all the forces have to be either parallel or they have to be concurrent. And we've expanded our vocabulary this semester. What does concurrent mean in statics? The it has a concurrent force system where all the forces go through one point. What's interesting is is I need to scoot this down or move it to another page or something. Let me try this. Let me do this. Um, uh, just try this. All right, I need to move that up a little bit. So if I draw the line of action for P, and I draw the line of action for the force C to D, that's where they intersect. There's only one point where those two lines intersect. What's interesting is the net B force has to also go through that point. It's a three force member. It has to have a concurrent force system. So just like this angle right here was determined to be um, 
30 degrees, you can determine this angle right here. Let's call it phi. With a little bit of work, I think you can get that angle phi. That angle phi comes in at 13.004 degrees. You're getting good at angles and lengths and that, aren't you? It's not that hard, but now that I know phi, I reduce this B to just only one. Let me try and redraw that free body diagram. So I'll have P down, force C to D, and then I look at it. This other force has to go through the same point up here, line of action, line of action. And so this, this B probably like this. And we, we have that angle uh, 13 degrees. Just like this angle was uh, 30 degrees. Okay. Well, that greatly helps because we come down here and we have only one B with the given 13 degrees. And you do the sum of the moments around point A. You don't have two unknowns in one equation. You have only one unknown in one equation. But when you have that one unknown in one equation, you calculate B equal to 139 pounds. Once you have that, you come up here. Uh, you have this is 139 pounds. I want to calculate P. Guess what I do? Calculate the sum of the moments about point D. So if I do the sum of the moments about point D after I calculate the magnitude of B, it's pretty straightforward. You calculate P is equal to 46.9 pounds. Well, I see we're out of time. I thank you for your attention, and uh, we'll see you on Monday.